What's up, I'm Triple Shoot, our creators has released, and in this video, I'll show you the best settings for a competitive edge and the highest FPS. I'm glad to say that I previously covered the playtest and things have improved since. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. This video is only going to touch on the in-game graphic settings. If you'd like even more performance, check the description down below where you'll find some related guides. So without further ado, tabbing into the game with my mostly default settings, I'm setting at a solid 45 FPS. All you need to do to get a huge boost in performance is pause, head across to settings, and then graphics at the very top. It's a bit difficult to see here, so I'll go back to the menu, where you can get there by hitting the settings wheel in the bottom right. Then, on the graphics tab, under display, we'll start off with a window mode. Make sure it's set to bodless full screen for the best experience. Exclusive full screen isn't recommended, so I'd recommend choosing against that. It should be the default anyways. Display resolution should match your display. FSR 3 frame generation, while it does give you a huge boost in FPS numbers, you'll notice the input latency. Things will feel rather sluggish, leave it disabled. VSync, turn this off unless you're getting screen tearing. Nvidia Reflex, low latency. If you have an Nvidia GPU, you can try turning this on for better input latency. Set this to on plus boost if you've got a really low powered CPU. Though, do note, doing so may drop you by about 2-3 to three FPS, or at least it did for me from 100. So I'll leave mine on on. Frame rate limit, leave this as unlimited, unless you're streaming, recording, or something like that, and other programs are lagging, in which case, cap your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting in game. Then, resolution scaling and anti-aliasing. Upscaled resolution should always be 100%, otherwise things will be blurry. By default, the game uses TAAU, which isn't the best upscaler, and there's a few different options. No AA, which is great for a native experience, but you'll get terrible performance. TAAU and TSR should both give blurry and smeary results, and you'll get the best experience out of NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR 3, or Intel XESS. If you're on an NVIDIA GPU, NVIDIA DLSS is most likely the best option, otherwise AMD FSR 3. Then, for the quality, I'd recommend choosing quality for a big boost in performance without too much visual loss. If you're playing at 4K or 2K, balanced should be okay, but anything below this, while it does give you better performance, things will start looking real weird real quick. Personally, I play with DLSS on quality, and you can see the performance numbers here. Then, for DLSS, you might see an option between CNN and Transformer. CNN is the older DLSS model, but it should give you higher performance than the Transformer model, which should give you better quality. If you got a ton of FPS, I'd recommend changing this to Transformer for a better looking game, otherwise CNN is fine for the best performance. Then scrolling down, graphics, field of view, while this does technically affect your performance, leave it on whatever you're most comfortable with, and motion blur, leave this disabled. Then from this point on, I'll hop back into the practice range so you can see everything live. Heading back to settings and graphics, the next option you'll have is ray tracing if you have a compatible graphics card. Now, while it may look pretty, this is dynamic epic versus high, medium, low, and static. Static will by far give you the best performance, and I'd highly recommend choosing that, and only that, unless you're comfortably over 150 or something FPS, in which case you can try playing around with RTX if you have a compatible GPU. Then scrolling down to quality, there's a ton of different options here. The overall preset, I'll quickly change it so you can see this is epic versus high, medium, and low. FPS wise, during benchmarking, there's a pretty steep drop off between each of these options, but what exactly are the biggest hitters? Well, if we start on epic, out of everything here, the first option that's got a pretty big effect is view distance. While cranking this down might seem like a good idea, sometimes trees and things like that, at least if you're sniping or playing a medium to long range, start getting a bit blobby and you can't see through them so well. If you're in desperate need of performance, you can lower your view distance, otherwise I'd recommend keeping it on medium or high here. Then anti-aliasing basically doesn't do anything with any of the options selected. I didn't see any impact FPS-wise. Shadows does have a pretty big FPS impact, as you can see here. However, epic versus high, medium, and low, you'll notice something's missing on low, and that is my own shadow. Now, I'm pretty sure this applies to other player shadows as well, and of course, that's highly important to see something like this, as it could give you a competitive edge. I'd highly recommend leaving shadows on medium and no lower, but you can gain a bit of extra performance by lowering it even further. Then, post-processing, I don't see much of a difference between epic and low, except for maybe the sharpening filter is a bit more cranked up, and there's a bit more ambient occlusion near bushes 
and things like that, which is added between low and medium. But besides that, they're all really minor effects. Post-processing does have an impact on performance, especially moving from medium to high and high to epic. So at most, I'd recommend medium, as that seems to give about the same performance as low. Then texture completely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you're well past the game's minimum requirements, you're setting with 12 gigs of VRAM or something like that, epic is perfect. Otherwise, if you're just barely meeting the requirements, you're probably going to have to stick to low or medium. For the most part, you can crank this option as high as you want, and you shouldn't see an FPS impact. You'll only see a quality increase, at least with most textures. That being said, though, if you're loading too many textures and you're having to swap them out constantly by having this option too high for your graphics, card, you can cause some stuttering, traversal stuttering, weird hitches and things like that. For me at least, with a 12 gig graphics card, Epic is perfect. The game never really seems to go above 7 gigs of GPU VRAM use. Then, effects. This has a pretty big impact on performance, though do keep in mind changing this option in-game will cause you to freeze for some time, especially in the larger open worlds. This does have a pretty big FPS impact, low to medium, basically no change, medium to high, a small change, and then high to epic, there's a massive change, so again, medium or low is as high as I'd recommend here. Then reflections, I basically can't see a difference, nor can I feel a difference FPS-wise, there's no change here. Unless, of course, you get to a very specific spot with tons of reflections, maybe you'll feel something then, but for most general gameplay, high or medium is fine. Then foliage, while you'd expect this to have a huge impact on performance, at least during testing through different areas and different maps, low and medium perform about the same, high has a very tiny FPS drop, and epic a very tiny one from them. It doesn't really matter, set this to whatever you feel like is best. That being said though, epic does add quite a bit of extra foliage, making it more difficult to see people, things like that, over hills, etc. The lower this option is, probably the better your competitive edge, and for that reason, leaving it all the way down is great here. Then, global illumination resolution. While this has barely any impact on how the game looks, it has a pretty big FPS impact. I'd highly recommend leaving this on low and forgetting about it. Then, at the very bottom, in-game performance overlay, you can enable this, and you'll see a tiny FPS counter in the top right. Cranking this up too detailed shows you a bit more info, and if you don't already have a third-party overlay, like River Tuner, or something like the Steam overlay, which you'll find a link for down below, as that's super powerful and built-in in, then this is a pretty good option. This unfortunately though doesn't show you your ping. Then at the very bottom, idle energy saving, limits your frame rate so you save on power and performance on the main menu, doesn't really matter, leaving it enabled is fine here. An inactive window energy saving is whenever you're minimized or unfocused like you're tapping out. While you can leave this enabled, I'd recommend leaving this disabled just so when you tap back in, in a heated moment, things don't stutter or freak out for a bit. Now with that, we've basically optimized everything. Now my FPS doesn't look too good here, and that is because I'm recording. However, though, in this area without recording, I'm comfortably setting it around 160 something with these optimized settings. Now, that being said, if I were to flick down to low from the 90 FPS that we had previously, you see we've jumped to around 100. So we've gained maybe about 10%, and most of that performance difference comes from the shadows, which drops us down quite a bit. So these settings are basically as optimized as they get. As for a competitive edge, I'd highly recommend checking out the accessibility tab, scrolling down to crosshair and making yourself a really bright, easy to see crosshair for any situation. For the most part, that means a very bright color, usually with an outline that is visible. And down here, I've set all three of these numbers to black, but you can try maxing them for a white border instead. Then as for the color, I'd recommend a super vibrant, maybe pink, cyan, or something along those lines that make it incredibly easy to spot exactly what's going on as the default white may be a little bit difficult sometimes, but with a black outline, it's not too bad. Then also something I didn't notice previously is the weapon crosshair center dot. While this is nice, having a center dot is pretty useful as it can really help you play shots when you might think you're not entirely too sure where things will be going. While it does take away a tiny bit of visibility, it is obviously something I'd recommend, but you can make it bigger here if you need extra accessibility. Then at the very bottom, window focus, bring game to foreground on match found. Usually you'll get a little pop up in the bottom corner saying you found a game, but you can turn this on. So you automatically tab back in whenever you find a game, just so you don't miss absolutely anything. Then on the audio tab, I'd highly, highly recommend enabling a night mode, which enables a more compressed dynamic range. So quiet sounds are louder. That means ambient wind, things like that, but also footsteps, which is super important and louder sounds like explosions 
explosions and big angry arcs are quieter, meaning that you can more easily hear things that are important, while louder, distracting sounds are turned down a bit. While hearing footsteps is absolutely fantastic in this game, this takes it to the next level. Music during gameplay, you can leave this turned on if you're not affected by it, but you can turn it off for a more focused gameplay experience. If you are going to leave it on, I'd recommend lowering your music volume here. Down here, Raider Voice Beta does seem pretty cool. It's like a voice changer type thing, as far as I understand from what's happening here. I haven't had the chance to test this out, though. I'm not too sure if it was included in the playtests. But of course, I assume if you have this enabled, there might be some more CPU usage and maybe a tiny drop in FPS while you're speaking at least. So having this turned off unless you want to mess around with it might have a very small impact but it's probably going to be negligible most of the time. And that is basically that. We've got the most out of arc raiders that we possibly can, and at this point you should definitely be enjoying a hopefully much better looking game if you were previously playing on low, or if you're just playing with default higher settings, a much better feeling game where your FPS is infinitely higher. I'd highly recommend you check the description down below. I'm working on a super exciting project, which is expanding my maps website to cover arc raiders as well. So you'll definitely be finding some super useful things there that you might not find on any other interactive map website. But yeah, that's really that. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.